exiled Zimbabwean opposition leader Roy Bennett and four other people have been killed in a helicopter crash in a remote northern part of the U.S. state of New Mexico late on Thursday. The crash of a private helicopter in rugged terrain killed 60-year-old Roy Bennett along with his wife, Heather, a former treasurer general of the main opposition party, the MDC, was, on an important, was an important figure in Zimbabwean politics and served time in prison under former President Robert Mugabe. A statement from the MDC reveals why was a resolute and committed fighter for democratic change in Zimbabwe, a charismatic grassroots politician and a successful farmer in the country's eastern uh, district. He was fluent in Zimbabwe's Shona language and had helped hundreds of impoverished villagers uh, pay school fees for their children. Bennett had the nickname Pachedu, a Shona word that uh, translates as together. Although he was white, he fought for the rights of black Zimbabweans and was one with the blacks. Staying in Zimbabwe, the ruling ZANU PF party has fired 11 uh, members of parliament all allies of former leader Robert Mugabe, and this comes as President Emerson Mangagwa allegedly continues a purge of officials that have publicly supported his old boss, Mugabe, and his wife, Grace. According to a transcript of Parliament procedures on Thursday, Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Mabel Chinamona, said ZANU-PF had notified the House of Assembly that the 11 MPs no longer represented its interests, and this triggered their dismissal. Some of the legislators were cabinet ministers in Mugabe's government. In November, ZANU-PF fired five top Mugabe allies from parliament, including Jonathan Moyo, a fiercely combative, uh, combative mouthpiece for a faction that backed Grace Mugabe's rise. Many of Mugabe's political allies were either arrested by the military in a series of raids in the early hours of November the 15th of uh, the coup, the day of the coup, while others fled to neighboring countries. Well, quite a mouthful of uh, those stories, but let's get more on the situation in Zimbabwe. And I'm being joined on the program by legal practitioner and African affairs analyst, uh, Yinka Oyeniji. Glad you can join us on it's the pleasure program. It's to be here. All right, Robert Mugabe, no longer in power, uh, you know, and then what happens? His allies, who are members of parliament, are being fired. Can this happen? What do you make of this? All right. Uh, it looks like uh, the ghost of Robert Mugabe is still <laughs> alive. won't go away. But these were things that were anticipated. All right. If Mugabe has, had been in governance for, so to speak, 39 years, you wouldn't expect that uh, it would be removed or ousted without a cleansing. All right, and so this is the part to cleanse the old system so that we can return the country back to good uh, democratic governance. This needs to be done, okay, because if you leave it outstanding, we have elections in a few months and all of that, you won't even guarantee there will be a, a safe transition, okay, to another civil rule. So this needs to be done so that the uh, state can be set to have fresh elections. So, I mean, what's the process of doing this, you know, this cleansing that you, you're talking about, how do you just, you know, set about that kind of cleansing because they're allies of a former president? Right, well, guaranteed, I'll say to you, uh, the last time I was here, one of the new species I got here was that the uh, doctorate degree awarded to Mugabe's wife was being probed and all of that. So it's like uh, exactly what happened uh, immediately after we had our own change of government in 2015. There would be unspoken or unwritten rules to say that nobody is going to be prosecuted, nobody is going to be thrown into jail and all of that for us to have a simple, safe transition. So if now the government intends to say, okay, we don't want these allies to be there, we also don't want to have a long period of probing the activities and all of that, you simply have them leave the post. It happens everywhere. It happens in Nigeria. You drop commissioners here, you drop special advisors there, you dismantle uh, board members and all of that, just to ensure that uh, those who are the helm will now be uh, comfortable and feel safe to be able to implement their own agenda. Every government needs a strong opposition and mm. the MDC 
is one in mm. Mugabe. Now it's mm. one of its main leaders, Roy Bennett, we hear has sadly died in a helicopter crash. Mm. What, what do you think this will do for the polity in Zimbabwe? Again, this, this, this is what we talked about the last time here, about secession. Honestly, uh, the main opposition leader is Kansas Striki. All right, and this is another uh, juggernaut uh, of them all who has uh, unfortunately died. Our condolences to them and to all those who passed in recent times, even we have our own issues in Nigeria with respect to deaths. However, because this succession thing had been in move before now, it won't necessarily affect a lot. Like I said, they, they have opposition leaders who are in their 30s, who are in their 40s, who are being groomed, all right? We, we, the state burial or something would not be out of place. You think, quickly get over that and then move on to the business of governance. It's not uh, an accident, so to speak, on the opposition party, which already always put itself in a good stead to have people in opposition. So other than the fact that we've lost people, all right, and then it's in a state of mourning and all of that, we be guaranteed that the, the effect had been mitigated even before now. Right. Uh, President Mangagwa, you know, mm -hmm. announced that elections will take place in another four to five months or mm -hmm. so. With what's going on now, do you think those elections will be credible? Is it enough time mm -hmm. to organize elections? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's, it's, not, it, it's not to say that it's not enough time. All right. You, you must understand, and all of us must understand as well, that whatever happened in Zimbabwe in the last two, three months were not orchestrated in a few months ago. There were things that had been in the plan f for years. All right. I dare even say to you that whoever is going to be the next president will already be known somehow. All right. So the process then begin today. Those, uh, the period already stipulated can also not be extended. It's been there to say you go on there, you're a part-time president holding for. So I think that it's enough time for, for them to be able to conduct elections. Right, thank you for your thoughts on that. Mm. African Affairs Analyst Yinkao Yeneji speaking to us on Network Africa. Thank you a lot.